We've all heard of the Great Firewall of China, which the Chinese government uses to block numerous sites, especially news sources, like the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, CNN, Fox News, BBC, and YouTube. But what about U.S. censorship and surveillance? Is Big Brother watching you? The U.S. government justifies covert organizations like the NSA by citing terrorist attacks and judicial oversight, which governs these institutions. But how effective is this oversight? And how much are U.S. citizens under surveillance? I, I, I want to be very clear. Some of the uh, hype that we've been hearing over the last day or so, nobody's listening to the content of people's phone calls. This program, by the way, is fully overseen not just by Congress, but by the FISA court, a court specially put together to evaluate classified programs to make sure that the executive branch or government generally is not abusing them and that there it's being carried out consistent with the Constitution. For example, none of what Obama just said is false. The content isn't monitored, but the people involved, the duration and frequency of communication, the location of those involved, and other important info is recorded. And, as he said, the FISA court does oversee the NSA and other covert organizations. However, the FISA court has, every 90 days since 2006, renewed an order that compels the nation's telecommunications providers to hand over metadata pertaining to millions of U.S. citizens. This is nothing but a rubber stamp used to justify searches. And the warrant? Well, let's look at that. Every time you get a national security letter, you have to go to a judge? Or no. As huh. you well know, national security letters, just like administrative subpoenas, you don't have to go to a judge. The statute does allow for the person on whom those are served to seek judicial review. What she fails to mention yeah, is that those that the data is requested of, of can't be told about it due to a built-in gag order on the third parties for any U.S. government request for data. And the warrant, which is used to justify all of this oversight, is incredibly vague. A one-paragraph order, which does not pertain to any individual or any specific information, but rather allows the NSA to look at any metadata they deem fit. There are times when we have to have those things in place. So at some point, obviously, you became aware. So at some point, the person does become aware. But yes, the statute does allow us to do that. The statute allows us. And the significance of what she has just said? Essentially what she says is, we are just and righteous because you get judicial review. But there are some cases where you don't, and we are still just and righteous. And you should trust us because COINTELPRO will never happen again. The counterintelligence program that targeted so many dissidents in yeah. the 1970s. Tried to get Martin Luther King Jr. to kill himself, for example. The FBI wrote him a letter and encouraged him to commit suicide. This is a big part of why U.S. surveillance of American citizens is such a big deal. Because in the past, it has been used to discredit and silence people in opposition to what the government is doing at the time, which is a fundamental right, not only of our Constitution, but a necessity for any free democratic society. In the United States, we would have to go through an FBI process a warrant to get that and serve it to somebody to actually get it. I see, but you do have the capability of doing it. Not in the United States. Not without a warrant. No, no. We don't have the technical insights in the United States. In other words, you have to have something to intercept or some way... This is a pretty contradictory statement, because on the one hand, he's saying the U.S. doesn't even have the capability to monitor citizens, and on the other, he's saying you can go to the third parties with a warrant, which is exactly what the NSA has been doing, often with even out a warrant, to companies like Google and Verizon to get data that they want. And as this next segment shows, the companies have a big incentive to cooperate. Namely, that the government isn't asking for information about the corporations themselves yet, and that the corporations get immunity for providing information, and are even encouraged to provide information to institutions like the NSA. Oh, William Bidding, what about the, the, the companies that are approached by the government uh, to participate uh, or facilitate uh, uh, the surveillance? Uh, well, first of all, I don't think any of them oppose it in any way. I mean, they, they were approached to saying you'll be patriotic if you support us. 
Ultimately, it is the secrecy and broad scope of the rules governing the NSA, the incentives of third parties to provide info to the government, and the lack of recourse available to individuals monitored by the NSA and other covert organizations that make surveillance in the U.S. such a threat to both our privacy and our freedom of speech. These broad surveillance measures also beg the question of how different our government is from China, and whether or not this unseen censorship is harder to combat than firewalls, which outright block info from the country. Make sure that we are putting the proper framework in place so that we don't have an executive branch from being able to come in and look at data that may have no relevance to national security, nothing that could connect uh, the average American with any sinister activity, making sure their freedom is protected so that they, they can use the internet, knowing the government's not looking over their shoulder at everything they're doing. It is a brave new world and Big Brother is watching us, that's for sure. Uh Now you're masters of war You that build the big gun You that build the death place You that build the big bomb You that hide behind walls You that hide behind desks I just want you to know I can see through your mask